we'll sum up the message tonight, the rest of the message on model church tonight. We preached the first point. Uh, the first point was the model church hears the word of God. We talked about who, who they heard the word of God from. They heard the word of God from Paul, uh, the preacher, amen. We talked about what kind of preacher he was. Uh, he was a praying preacher. He was a perceptive preacher. And then um, tonight uh, we're going to start in verse number 6, and we're going to talk about uh, a model church not only needs to hear the word, but it needs to heed the word. Now, the word heed just simply means to obey or do what the word says. Now, I'm hoping and praying that all of you that are here tonight heed the word of God. Are you saved tonight? Say amen. 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 Now, you have uh, impartial, well, I say uh, uh, probably uh, as far as salvation is concerned, you have heeded that part of the word. It's amazing sometimes, and you've heard me say this a lot of times, that we trust the Lord with our soul. Amen. Keep us out of hell. But we can't trust Him with anything else. We can't trust Him with our testimony. We can't trust Him with our family. We can't trust Him with our time. We can't trust Him with our, uh, with our finances. We need to give everything to the Lord. Amen. We need to give everything to the Lord. Now here tonight, we're going to read in verse 6, 7 and 8, 9 and 10. The Bible said, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye uh, were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Archaea. Uh, and from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and, and Achaia, but also in every place where uh, your uh, place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, and uh, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us uh, from the wrath to come. Now we're talking about the model church tonight. We'll give you two points. Uh, the first, uh, second point here, we gave you first point last week, a model church hears the word of God. This week, uh, uh, this week we're going to talk about, first of all, a model church heeds the Word of God. It heeds the Word of God. When I say heeds the Word of God, I mean simply that it obeys. It does what it says. Now, I mean, you know, uh, we're all going to fall short of the Word of God. and uh, But we, we don't want to fall short on purpose. Uh, you know, we talked about temptation in a message uh, this past Sunday night. Uh, we talked about one uh, in the previous uh, week. And a lot of times we know, uh, we know, we know, we all know here tonight. There might be some children that are here tonight that don't know right and wrong in certain situations. And, uh, you know, it's like, uh, but, but, you know, if you teach a child from a small age, like, uh, you know, uh, Levi tickles me. He always wants to mess with something when he's swinging at something. Sometimes he's actually just, just messing. Sometimes he's hitting. And we don't know, I don't know the difference, his mama might. But he was up here and he started messing, and so I come over here and straighten him up. And then later on I said, no, I don't know if you heard me say that. But he, he kind of shook him, you know. He knew what that meant. because he's, he's, His mama beats the devil out of him. She'll beat him slam down in the floor, and then he'll get up and do something else. But he's just stubborn, you know, hard-headed like his mama. And, uh, but anyway, the thing about it is we're the same way as Christians a lot of times. We know what we're supposed to do, but we don't do it. And, and I will say this. Most Christians, uh, they don't sin uh, uh, by commission. Uh, we sin more by omission. Amen. We don't go out and steal. We don't go out and commit adultery and murder fornication and all that kind of stuff. Now, there's some people just got caught up in some of that stuff. But most of the sins that we commit as Christians are things that we omit. Amen. We don't pray like we should. We don't read the Bible like we should. Uh, we, don't, uh, you know, we don't witness like we should. Things like that. You know, We don't have the faith that we should. So we, we, uh, the Bible teaches all these things. And, and they're in the Word. So we need to heed that. In other words, we need to do that. That's what we're talking about it here. Now, the Bible says in verse number uh, 6, and you became followers of us. In other words, they heeded, uh, they heeded the word of God 
that was preached, amen. I want to say this tonight, if I can. In verse number six, it says that uh, not only, uh, I want to say this, they, they, they followed, listen, they followed the servants of the Savior. The Bible said right there in verse six, and you became followers of us. Not only did they, not only did they follow the servants of the Savior, but they found the Savior of the servants. Amen. What I mean by they found, uh, they started following Paul and uh, uh, the, 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 that maybe that ministry or that missionary team. Uh, they started following them and they found the Lord. Amen. Now what I mean by that is they maybe came to the service or paid attention in the service and and started coming and uh, as following, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like social media, people have followers, you know. Uh, and uh, I think I got eight. And <laughs> now I'm just kidding. I don't know what I, how many friends I got. I've deleted so many. I, I was going through there trying to get rid of all them names that keep popping up, and I just got tired of it. I said, shut. I am not fooling with all this. But anyway, you know, when you think about it, they became followers, Paul said, of us. And then the Bible said, uh, and of the Lord. The reason they became a follower of the Lord is because they, 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 they saw something in Paul at, that intrigued them. And I believe the Holy Ghost enlightened them that they were men of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but, I, but, but maybe before you ever got saved, you got uh, to listen to somebody preach or go into a church or, uh, you know, became a follower of a person or something other. Now, if that person never leads you to the Lord, he's not a follower of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Paul said when they, uh, you know, uh, when they followed Paul, they found the Lord because Paul himself was a follower of Christ. And so uh, they followed the, ser uh, the, uh, uh, the servants of the Savior, but then they found the Savior of the servants. Now, Paul said, and you became followers of us. Uh, it seems that Paul pointed them to Christ just as John the Baptist did. You remember there in the book of John, he said, be, John 1, 29, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Paul said, you became followers of, just like when someone gets saved or makes a profession of faith. I want to say this. When somebody comes to Clearview and makes a profession of faith, says they have got the same, and they want to be a follower of the Lord. Now, uh, we, we don't expect them to go somewhere else. I, I'm just being honest. We, we, we expect them to come here. I mean, that's just a, that's just a given. You know, It ain't going to always happen, but it's what you want. And, and, and we, want them to, uh, we want them to come in and, 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 and listen to me, listen to me, listen to me close. We want them to come in and we want to be so much like the Lord, Brother Mark, that they can be like us. Amen. In other words, they'll come in and sit down with us. They'll stand and sing with us. They'll open their Bibles with us. Right. Amen. amen. And they'll say amen with us. Yep. Amen. Amen. They don't, uh, they, we, we don't expect them to try to dispute what we're trying to preach, amen. We're not coming here to have a debate. If you want to have a debate, you can go somewhere else. We're not going to, listen, if you start trying to debate with me, I'm going to get Brother Mark and Brother Steve, I'll get Brother Mark and, I'll get Brother Mark and Brother Nathan to pick them up, amen, and Brother Steve to point his finger in their face and say, you can't do that and get on out of here. Our uh, brother Steve will give him a good uh, Blacksburg scolding, amen. <coughs> we ain't putting up with no foolishness like that. We didn't come here to debate. We come here to pay attention to the man of God and to worship, amen. And so what we do is we expect people to become, and, and we, ought to, we ought to have the testimony of Christ where people can follow us. Amen. Now, there have been times when people got offended in something I said. <laughs> There's been times when we got offended by something somebody else said. We got to all, uh, always understand we all human, but we also got to be careful, amen. Got to be careful, amen. And somebody was expressing to me the other day, it might be all, it might be the angle that you're listening from. 
Amen. Can I say something right now? I don't know, and I'm not fussing at Brother Keeter. Brother Keeter has had that seat for 25 years. And I don't know how in the world he's sitting back there and hear me preach. I, I, I can't do that. I can't. I mean, just as soon as somebody in front of me scratched their head, I look at them. I mean, I couldn't sit beside a window at school. Bird fly by. I was gone for 20 minutes. <laughs> Wondering where that bird, if that bird got that worm or if he pooped on somebody's car. I mean, that's the way it was. I was, I was I, you know, squirrel. <laughs> just distracted. Son, you got it. You got it. Uh, honestly, amen. Nathan was like that. I'm going to tell you something. Listen here. I'd be sitting up here on the front watching the preacher. I can't sit far back. Just telling you. But what I'm trying to say is, listen, when people do come in, we ought, to, we ought to show ourselves as an example, as he says in the next verse. We ought to be examples. You know the difference between an example and an example? I told you last week. Example is anything that's uh, an example like uh, something that you can use uh, a person or an object. An example is when it's just a person being an example. Okay? That make that makes sense? Example could be an object. I could use that piano as an example. But an example is only talking about a person. Okay? So he calls them in samples, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But he says there in that scripture. Uh, you know, and, and he says that you become followers of, of us. Now, we want, we want to be so much like the Lord. Amen? And every church don't do it the same way. That's why people's got to find out where they need to go. Okay? You go to some churches, they don't dress like we dress. You go to some churches, they don't do the order of service like we do. You know what I mean? It's just, but they use that King James Bible and they believe in it. Amen? Amen? And so when people come, we, we ought to have, uh, uh, we ought to have uh, our lives so close to God that they can follow us. Amen. Yeah. Now, they, we've had some people, they'll get the phone out and they'll be texting and they'll be looking on the phone and all that kind of stuff during <laughs> church and do other things. Now, we don't promote that right here. If you see anybody do that, please raise your hand. We'll, I'll call them down. I'm just kidding. I won't call them down. But we don't do that. Now, if you take your phone out, I've seen all of them over here taking the phone out. What? Taking pictures of JJ up here, his uh, debut at singing. Amen. I understand that. Hallelujah. Send that to Elizabeth. Maybe she'll come watch him sometime. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we want. But here's the thing, folks. We want to be an example to those that come in. Hey, that fellow right there knows the Lord. Watch him. That lady right there, she knows the Lord. Watch her. That's the way it ought to be. Uh, listen, we don't expect them to get saved. And go somewhere else and be like somebody else. We want to be so much like the Lord. They get saved here. They want to stay here. And be like us. Amen. Be like us. You, now let me say that. Again. They want to be like us. Now I want you to say to yourself right quickly. If somebody comes in and gets saved. And joins this church. Can they be like me? And be like God? Something to think about. That's the way these people work. Let's move on. Now we notice uh, not only that they found the Savior of the servants. Notice, uh, notice a couple things about that. They, they uh, notice the Thessalonians, uh, their, their discernment. I mean, they, they could see, they could see in Paul and his people the Lord. Now I will tell you this. Spiritual discernment is only of those that are saved. Amen. The Bible teaches that. Amen? Right. Like the Holy Ghost trying to speak to someone about what they need to do or the Word of God trying to speak to somebody about what they... That's only can be discerned of a saved person. Now you can read... A lost person can read the Bible and they'll know all the history of the Bible. They'll know all the verses of the Bible. But they'll never be spoken to by the Spirit until they right. get saved. That's what I'm saying. To be, Amen. Because it's, it's you know, it, it, spiritual discernment is one thing, but then there's another type of discernment. People can look at you and see whether you're real or not. 
I mean, if you, you say, well, they, they judging me. Well, they probably are. They're looking at you and making a judgment. Just like when you go to a stop sign and you look to the left, you look to the right, and you look back to the left. And you're thinking that that white car is coming on pretty good. I better hold on. Don't do it like the preacher. <laughs> Take off. I can get them. I can beat them. You got to make a judgment. You know what I'm saying? This world is all caught up in this. You know who talks about that so much? Ain't the world so much to talk about. These liberal churches talk about judging. The word of God's already judged. Right. Amen. Let me say now. Let me move on. Listen, when uh, we notice here, Paul in First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one said, "Be you followers of me, even as I also am of Christ." I mean, he had enough confidence in what he believed and how he was living that he could encourage somebody else just to follow him. If you don't know where to step, he's saying, follow me. I remember as a child going hunting with my daddy. I didn't know where to step. I'd always follow him. And you know what? When I was small, he'd always hold that limb for me that was about this height on me as a child. He'd hold that limb for me. You know. When I got about 11, 12, 13, Brother Mark, He'd say, follow me, but don't get too close. Because he wasn't holding no limbs. I had to learn to knock them out of the way. I had to learn how to step over them briars. I mean, when I was little, he'd get in the briar patch and he'd step on them. He'd, he'd hold them down for me while I walked through there. And I got a little older. I had to, had to learn how to take some of them steps on my own. And the Lord would do that too. Right. He'll clear a way for you. But every once in a while, he, he, he wants you to take a step of faith. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Now, what I'm talking about is not only notice what the Thessalonians discerned, but I want you to notice something else. Um, in, in, in verse number 6, he said there, And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word of God in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to notice, having received the word. Now, the people in Acts chapter 2, in verses 38 through 41, the Bible tells us that Peter preached repentance and they gladly received the word of God and was baptized. Yeah. Amen. I believe these people at Thessalonica did the same thing. The people at Thessalonica received the word, but the Bible says it, they received it in much affliction. Yeah. What does that mean, much affliction? Well, troubles, hardships, persecutions, trials. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Opposition. <coughs> you mean that they had opposition trying to trust Jesus Christ? Yeah. You know what? Most family members, they don't care if you make a profession. But if you try to go to church faithfully, they'll say, well, you don't got to go all the time. That's right. You don't got to be a fanatic. Yeah. They say, all right, we're having a birthday party Sunday night. Six o'clock can't be there. we got church. Are you kidding? You going to skip out on a birthday party and go to church? When you get him back there, give him a real one. And hit a little further under the diaper. You ever had family members do that yet? I have. They go have some kind of get together. I mean, you got y'all got church. It's like uh Vernon's uh at Vernon's school, they had that chorus thing. I mean he said it's part of his grade. And he said, We gotta be there. And he said, if I wouldn't be, if I wasn't there, then it, it they would uh, it would reflect my grade for the year. I said, if we was having revival, you wouldn't be there. I ain't no extracurricular stuff at school going to affect any kid's grade. I'll be up in there in somebody's face in a minute, amen. You understand what I'm saying? But we didn't got to the point now. Everything else is more important than church, and if we ain't having nothing. We ain't having no ball game, or if we ain't going to a ball game, or if we ain't going to a concert, or if we ain't going out of town, we might go to church. I'm not talking about y'all. Y'all come all the time. We got 30 people here tonight. That's wonderful. On a Wednesday night. I done counted y'all twice. Amen. I do like my daddy. If any of y'all was pregnant, we count them too. Amen. But they, listen, having received the word in much affliction, I need to move on. Hey, they probably uh, they received, they probably received, Opposition from family, 
neighbors, co-workers, friends. There's always somebody got to say something to you about trying to serve the Lord. Uh, you, you ain't got to be that fanatical. You ain't got to believe every Bi uh, Bible verse. Oh, you can take a drink. Oh, you can do this. You, you can go to the dance hall. You can go here. You, uh, God don't care. So they received the word in much affliction. But the Bible said with joy of the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't know what troubles they had. I don't know what opposition they had. I don't know what persecution or hardships that they had. But they had it. But they did not let that affect their joy. There's so many people that are, I ain't happy. I ain't happy. <laughs> I want a new car. I want a new house. I want a new husband. I just gave you three examples of my wife saying. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that stuff ain't gonna bring you no happiness. Right. I mean, it might last for a little bit. <laughs> Some people think I take a little bit. <laughs> Listen to me. Real joy comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Bible says. Amen. You having a rough time? Tears may endure. We may endure for a night. The joy cometh. In the morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> we have so much mess going on in our lives. Through our families and through just normal living. It bogs us down. And if we're not careful, it affects us spiritually. Oh, yeah. Amen. These people did not allow that to happen. I'm still in verse 6. Listen here. They, had, they were enjoying what they had heard. And they were enjoying what they had. Yes, you know, I, I just, I, I, I got to be honest. I have bad days. I have bad days. I, I was telling you the other day, I had a bad day, and I called Brother Sidney Weaver, and I told him, I said, Brother Sidney, I said, grace ain't fair. And he said, God ain't fair either, brother. You're right. You're right. <laughs> he said, if it, was, if it was fair, we'd all be in hell. I said, you're right, preacher. That kind of picked up a little bit. Amen. <laughs> This joy, hey man, it's joy from God. Joy in the facts, the word. Amen. Joy in their faith. Joy because of their future. Yeah. Amen. Not man-made joy, not material things, but spiritual things. I'm telling you, listen here, this, when, you, when you see all, and then look at verse 7. So that you were in samples. So that you were in samples, we talked about that a while ago, to all that believe. Listen, they were an outstanding church. This church had a great testimony. Yeah. I didn't I didn't ran this one a while ago a little bit, so I'll just hit it just a little bit. What kind of testimony does this church have? I mean, when I first came here, there's people asking people in the church. In the community, did I have the same standards as Brother Ru uh, Rudolph did? They just asked about standards. They didn't ask about what Bible I preached out of. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't ask nothing about no delivery. They was talking about standards, convictions. Does he have a TV? Does he wear shorts? I mean, just crazy questions. Yes and no, and I'll let you figure them two out. Amen. You might want to watch my TV, but you don't want to see my legs. I'm just going to tell you. What kind of ensample are you for this church? Now, not only does a model church heed the Word of God, but the model church heralds the Word of God. I'm going to hit this kind of <coughs> quickly. There's three things I want you to notice in verse 8, 9, and 10. Listen, they were heralds of gospel in their evangelism. Amen. And it's seen in their style, their scope, their significance. And then there was uh, heralds of gospel in their expectation. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. There needs to be evangelism here. In other words, don't just leave all the spreading of the gospel up to the ministers. Amen. You need to go out and you need to spread the gospel at work when you get an opportunity. Don't get in trouble. Don't lose your job. You can talk about the Lord in the parking lot and in the commissary while you're not running your machine or doing your work. 
most time, most most people can talk about it about any time. But what I'm trying, you can you can evangelize at Walmart and Dollar General, anywhere in the public, your neighbor neighborhood, evangelize, and then uh, uh, expectation, expectation. Now, if you don't ever expect anything of somebody else that you don't expect of yourself. <coughs> hey, man. Amen. Now I'm going to show you something right quickly. In verse 8, the Bible said, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia but in, and Achaia, but also in every place your faith got to God where it is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. Number one, I want you to notice the, about that word they was received a while ago. The Bible said in verse 6, they received... <coughs> The word, amen, in much affliction, but in joy of the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you what, listen, they just didn't stop there. They, that word that they received was sounded out. It's almost like they uh, took one of them bullhorns like I preached from back during the pandemic. Until one of Carol's family members broke it. Dropped it. It was headed... Uh, Talking in it or something other, and it got knocked over, dropped, broke or something other. I'd like to get me another one of them. I heard a testimony of uh, people in Grover hearing uh, way on down the streets Amen. the word of God being preached. That's the way it was almost. I no, no, no. They didn't hear them holler in the next country, but word travels. What I'm saying, what was, listen, apparently, the Bible teaches us here, apparently when Paul arrived in Macedonia, they'd already heard about what happened down at Thessalonica. He said, listen, so that we need not to speak anything. In the latter part of that verse, we didn't even have to tell them about what happened down here. They heard about the souls getting saved. Now, I'm going to say this right now. I don't know so much about what happened in the revival in my hometown. But I've talked to many of the pastors there, you know, the great Burlington Revival. Now, I'm not saying anybody didn't get saved. I'm just not saying that. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying there was no churches that benefited from that. Now, I don't know that any of the preachers that I know in that area will see this on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever, but, but they, they're going to tell you the same. Listen, they, they've already said that. But it was sounded abroad everywhere. It sounded good. But I'm going to tell you one thing right this right. And I'm not saying that people didn't get saved there. But I'm telling you right now, right now, right now, here it doesn't like this is true, buddy. This is real. Amen. Listen, what sounded out? I tell you what was sounded out, what was taught. What them people, the word of God that was taught to them was sounded out. Not only what was taught was sounded out, but I want to tell you something right now, what was testified. Oh, yeah, I mean, somebody told somebody, and then somebody told somebody else, and then somebody in the next town told somebody in the next town. And they said, can you believe that Mark Tessner? I mean, did you hear about him? He got saved. I mean, he went up there at that charity Baptist church, and, he, he, and can you believe he went forward and he knelt down on an altar and he trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And, and you know, I've watched him and God has changed him. I, I'll tell you right now, can you believe that? And the next town told the next town and then Macedonia and then Achaia. And it seemed like word like that traveled. That's the kind of word that needs to travel these days. Gossip. Wickedness that happens within the body of Christ sometimes travels quicker than the gospel. Yeah. That right, Gail? We saw Gail somewhere. Now this has been six, almost sixty years ago, fifty some years ago. <coughs> same way with me. Same way with my kids. I have people come in and say, "You know, your kid doing this over there, doing that." <clears throat> so what your kids doing? <clears throat> when 
But I'd say that, they'd look at me real funny like I knew something on them. I didn't let them know. I just turned around and walked on. I didn't know nothing on their kids. <laughs> but I guarantee you this, <clears throat> most people that's talking, they know more about your children than they do about their own. Can I say something about my mom and dad? I, the, only bad, the only bad characters are my mom and dad is they're too gullible. That, that generation, uh, they, they, just, they trusted us too. Can I say way too much? Oh, way too much. Man, I'm telling you right now, I didn't have to watch Nathan. Nathan was pretty good. But I'm telling you right now, I'd be following Becca and Caleb around watching what they're doing. I mean, they, I, they ain't, listen, don't have no youngins and ever think that they ain't going to try what you done tried. They're probably going to step a little further. I'm so standing somewhere in the shadows, was Daddy. <laughs> oh, Lord. What was sounded out? We notice that in verse 8. Notice in verse number 9. For they themselves show us a banner of entering in. We head unto you and how you turn to God from idols to the serve the living and true God. i got to hurry up. It's 10 after. I want you to notice not only what was sounded out, but what was seen. People saw. They didn't go back down there to them old idols that they had. Hey, I'm going to tell you something right now. Hey, when you make profession and getting saved, amen, people don't need you to see you go back down to the pub. Yes, that's amen. Right. To the beer hall, to the dance hall, to any other place, amen. I'll just be honest with you. Listen here. Hey, if you uh, was hanging out those places where you got saved, best thing to do is steer clear of those kind of crowd, amen. Right, amen. You go by and see them, invite them to church. If they drinking, you might want to stay there just for a minute just to invite them to church and get on down the road. They invite you to one of their parties, just tell them you can't come. You, you just don't, you, I love you, man. I appreciate you. Care about you, but I can't come around that stuff. I don't need to be tempted with that kind of lifestyle any longer. Amen. 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 They turn to God from idols. I, you might not have an idol. Most people do. Amen. It may be their wife or their husband, boyfriend, girlfriend. It may be themselves. Well, since I've got Facebook, I found that there's some people that well, they really like themselves. <laughs> now nah, I really ain't even looked into no stuff. I'll be honest with you. I've been I've watched a few preacher friends preach is all. What they seen? Somebody saw the change, and that was the talk of the town. Hey, Amen. That how you turn to God from idols. They not only trusted, but started serving. This crowd had always, oh, I got saved, I got saved. You never see him at church. I don't know. Somebody said, well, they ain't taught like we are. The Holy Ghost supposed to be in them. That's right. Can he tell them nothing? He's the one who told them they was lost. Can he tell them they need to be in church? Come on now. Amen. Right. If you can trust him, you can serve him. Right. Not only what was sounded, but what was seen. But it was sincere. The Bible said in verse 10, And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Boy, that, this church right here, it ain't the perfect church. I'm talking about Thessalonica. And I think our church is much like that. You, you, you don't, if you don't know this, and Vance, you may not know this, I don't know. Cliff, your Baptist church got a testimony for this area. Still. Maybe not so much with the younger generation, but with the older generation it does, Jack. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you something right now. When I came here, I mean, uh, all I heard was, that fella right there is taking over for Rudolph Lemon. Them people got this fella to come up here and pastor the church. Oh, yeah. That's a testimony. That's a good testimony. We want to keep it like that. Amen. 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 A model church hears the word of God. A model church heeds the word of God. And a model church heralds the word. Gives forth. Now I'll tell you how you, another way you can evangelize. When you put your tithes in on, in the envelope and your offerings, put a little extra in there and uh, on your envelope and have missions. Write a little part of that amount for missions. For missions. And it'll go to help them support them missionaries we got on the wall back there. And maybe it'll take on some more in the future. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. 
All right, let's everyone stand tonight.